I'm John Buchanan, and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn how to add automation lanes to pattern sequences within Logic Pro. Now, pattern sequences are these fantastic opportunities for us to create a different kind of sequence. Rather than playing notes in live or drawing them with a pencil tool, what we can do is to almost take a kind of modular sequency kind of approach to creating undulating loops of notes. And it turns out that in addition to notes, we can also add individual parameters for any plugin we like. And what we're going to do is to explore that in this video. So what I've got is a kind of muted set of beats. We're going to come back to those in a little while. What I want to do is to start with a brand new pattern. So what I'm going to do is to select a new software instrument track. And what I'm actually going to do is to select the electronic piano or the e-piano, which is here, the vintage electronic piano as the instrument for which I want to create my sequence. So having selected it here, what I'm then going to do is to just press create. And now I get this lovely smooth roads. And relax. Okay, now this might be a slightly unusual choice for a sound for which I want to kind of create a pattern sequence, but actually it's the effect that I'm going to add to it that particularly draw me to this kind of sound as a starting point. So I'm gonna close this down. And instead what I'm going to do is to then press control and click and create a pattern region here in bar one. And what that will do is to give me a four bar sequence of this completely empty grid to which I can add the notes that I want. Now, just like any window within Logic, what I can do is to hit command and down to zoom in on this window if I want to see this a little bit bigger so that I can actually see each lane a little bit more clearly. And what that gives me a chance to do is to see the notes that are automatically assigned uh, sort of by default into my pattern sequence, which at the moment is a kind of C major scale from C2 up to C3. So the first thing I can do is to choose the notes that I actually want to use. Now, I can go through on a note by note basis, literally one row after another to do that if I want to. But what I can also do is to use a couple of key commands to kind of set the sort of shape that I might want to work with. I can load default scales as well, but I'm actually going to just choose a couple of notes sort of on a on a sort of individual um, lane basis, but I do want to make the kind of key of my pattern sequence D rather than C. And to do that, what I can do is to sort of jump the notes up. Now I can do that in a couple of ways. Firstly, what I can do is to jump in octaves. So if I hold down shift and option and up, you can see that the whole sequence is jumping up and down in octaves, much as it would if I was just working within the main page on a regular MIDI sequence. But what I can also do is to move in semitones by just holding down option and up and down. And what I'm gonna do is to select a sort of pattern around the scale of D instead. But rather than D major, I want D minor. So I'm gonna to come to the notes that aren't quite right for this scale, including this F sharp for a start. Then what I'm gonna do is to click here, select notes, come into F, and I'm going to swap F sharp three for F three. I'm also going to swap B three for A sharp three, which is the right note. A sharp and B flat, remember, are the same note. Uh, music theory again. And then what we're going to do is to swap C sharp four for C four. So I can go through and just sort of customize the um, notes that I want. And I can go further. And this is the really crucial button we're gonna be looking at within this video, which is what if I want notes that are beyond the set number that are just created by the sequence? So what if, for example, I also wanted to have F4, which is higher than this note? Well, I can press this plus button here and I can select notes. And what I can then do is to come to F and I can select F4 and I get a new note at the top of my sequence, which is giving me an extra lane and I can go through and create as many of those as I like. And you might have seen, in fact, within Drum Machine Designer that some of the pattern sequences that you create by default create a lane for every single note within a drum kit that's created within Drum Machine Designer. So that's how we can go through and do that. So to create my sequence, what I then need to just do is to literally add the notes where I want them. And every time I click on a note, it's just going to create a little pattern for me. So I'm going to just create a little pattern sequence, which occasionally plays a couple of notes together, but mostly is probably going to just go with one note at a time. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that might be quite interesting. Okay, let's have a listen to that. I'm actually gonna take the tempo down to, well, up a little bit actually. We'll start at 82 BPM. Okay. 
Okay, so this is one uh, collection of notes that um, I have programmed here. And of course, if I want to change or add, all I need to do is to click on any note that's selected and either put it back in or change it for another one. So that's fine, no problem. Obviously, there are other things I can do to this pattern sequence to make it more interesting as well. So for any individual lane, I can choose the direction of playback. So in addition to just playing from left to right, if I want to, for, it, for specific notes, what I can do is literally just change them so that they either just play backwards or they play forwards and backwards, whatever. What I can also do, just to make things even more interesting, is to come to the loop length, and I can change the loop length at either end of the sequence for any of these individual notes. So if, for example, what I wanted to do is to say, okay, I want the sequence to be a little bit different each time, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the loop length of this top note much shorter than the others, which means it's also going to loop, but of course, because it's now not looping over 16 steps, that note is gonna play back more regularly, but it's also gonna play back in a different position each time because I've got a little pause before it, these two empty squares. And I can do the same thing with any of my other sequences as well at either end. So if I wanted to, I could take a couple off this sequence and so on and so forth. So I can make this as kind of complicated as I want to, even missing out notes altogether. If I've programmed a note but I want the sequence to be shorter, I can do that. So effectively what that means is now every time the sequence plays back, rather than being locked to a 16 note grid for every single note, now it's going to be a little bit more random. And that's really interesting because it means that the sequence just keeps evolving. Okay, but so far we still haven't thought about what else we can do that isn't just note based. And this is where the pattern sequencer really comes into its own. Let me show you exactly what I mean. What I'm going to do on this sound is I'm going to put an auto filter from the filter menu in the first effect slot at the top. And by default, what this is gonna do is to give me a low pass filter on this sound. Now we've spent a lot of time looking at this plugin on this channel, but to kind of reset the filter so it's just behaving as a regular filter, what I need to do is to drop the envelope amount so that we're not assigning any of the envelope here into the filter. I just want it to be an absolutely fixed filter which isn't being pushed open and closed by the filter, uh, the envelope settings. So what that really means in real terms is that if I play this sequence back and I adjust the cutoff point, we're gonna hear the brightness of the sound change. Okay, now wouldn't it be great if I could automate that movement? Well, we know that I can do that just within the automation lanes within Logic regularly, but what that's gonna give me is this kind of pretty regular, sort of curvy approach to the automation. It's either going to be, the filter's either gonna be sort of rising or falling, and it's gonna be doing this in this kind of linear, sweepy way. What if what I could do would be to add an individual step amount for every single pattern of the sequence, whereby the cutoff value was either just up or down or somewhere in between. So we've got this much more kind of flickery approach to exactly what the tone is doing at any given moment. Well, I can do exactly that within my pattern sequence. If I close down the filter for a moment, We'll make this just a little bit taller, so more of the screen is being given over to this sequence. If I come back to my plus button, I can see that underneath notes, I've got automation. And what this allows me to do is to come and find parameters that I might want to automate. Now, I could use MIDI controllers, I've also got smart controls, so anything that's actually set up for this sound, I can automate. So those are gonna be parameters that relate to the electric piano. I can actually dive in and see all of the parameters of the electric piano if I come to its plugin. But at the bottom, because I've added it as an effect, here is the auto filter. So if what I did was to select the cutoff here, suddenly I've got a new lane of information. Now then, the first thing I need to do is to uh, turn on the steps for any point where I want a cutoff value. So if I just wanted one, let's say in the first step and in step nine, okay, well I can do that. But probably what I want to do is to have a step all the way through. So now what that means is that I'm gonna be able to assign a value to every single step of this 16 step sequence. So firstly what I've done is I've turned them all on. Then what I need to do is to return to the velocity slash value amount here. And what this is now going to do is to give me the cutoff value at every step of my 16 step sequence. So in other words, if I wanted the first note to be really bright, I could open it up. Then what I could do would be to have a much, much, much duller second step. 
and so on and so forth. I can literally just go through and assign an individual cutoff offset to every single note. And if I want to, what I can do is to drag over a few of these to create ramp style shapes, or I can just keep doing what I'm doing at the moment, which is just to kind of click this open and closed. And if when we listen back to this sequence, we keep this window open, we'll be able to see the cutoff value here being manipulated by that pattern of sequence choices. Okay, so it's almost like having a kind of little wah pedal really kind of assigned to our electric piano. Now, of course, I can keep going. I might decide that the next effect that I want to put onto this sound is maybe, I don't know, let's say chroma verb. Let's add some space to this. I'm gonna come and find something which is kind of warm, maybe, something that feels like it's just gonna give us I don't know, something uh, sort of smooth and soothing around this. Look, here is in fact a smooth space. Lovely. I'm going to turn up the decay time so we can hear it nice and clearly. And at the moment I can see that the wet amount, so the amount of reverb is currently set at 50%. So that's probably going to be the parameter that I'm going to want to automate here. If I want the amount of space around this sound to change from one step to another, it's the wet value, the amount of reverb that we're actually allowing to be a portion to this sound at any given moment that I need to automate. Again, if I had zero, there'd be no reverb. And if I had 100%, we'd be hearing maximum reverb. So again, in order to kind of add this parameter, all I need to do is to come here, down to my automation lanes. I'm now gonna see that chroma verb has been added. And then what I'm gonna to need to do is to come and find the wet mix, the wet amount, the amount of reverb, which is here. Again, I need to remember that I need to switch on the individual steps that I might want to automate. Then I can come back to velocity value and then again, just choose the amount of reverb that I want to assign. So what we're gonna get is this kind of spot amount of a lot of reverb right at the beginning. Then it's going to maybe just drop away a little bit. And I might just add a kind of pulse of reverb on each kind of beat of this sequence before less of it in the remaining kind of three sixteenth notes for each individual beat. Okay, I'm gonna add one more effect. What I want to do is to make this just a little bit kind of more, I don't know, just a little bit more kind of dubby, I guess. What I'm gonna do is to grab the tape delay plugin. I'm gonna select an eighth dotted note so that effectively that's part of my sequence as well. I'm gonna use the, diff uh, the diffuse tape head, which is gonna give us a slightly more reverby delay, if that makes sense. Rather than this absolutely kind of clinical one, we're gonna end up with something which is just a little bit smoother. And this time what I'm gonna do is to automate the feedback amount. Now remember, feedback controls how many echoes we hear. So low feedback, one echo, lots and lots of feedback, lots and lots of echoes. Simple as that, really. So what I'm gonna do is to return one more time here, come to automation. This time again, I'm gonna see that there's a new um, uh, sort of addition to my list of available parameters. And this time I'm going to dive into the feedback amount and we're again in good shape. Now, the only thing to say at this point is I've got three different um, collections of parameters available to me, all of which are coming from different plugins. Now that's fine. It doesn't matter that that's the case. But I need to be a little bit careful because if I want to really know what these lanes are, I need to think a little bit about whether or not there's a chance that some of these names might be duplicated elsewhere in my channel strip of plugins. Imagine for a second that what I'd done was to start my sequence with retro synth rather than the electric piano. Would cutoff refer to the parameter from the auto filter or might it refer to the cutoff frequency actually in retro synth? You see what I mean? So effectively what I might need to do is to be a little bit careful. There might be circumstances under which I'm using retro synths cutoff and I'm also using a separate filter, maybe using a high pass filter to change tone in a slightly separate way. So if what I want to do is to be really fastidious, there's that word again, about how these are actually labeled, what I can do is to control click each of these and I can rename them. So what I might do is to call this auto filter cutoff 
so that I know that that's what that parameter is. I might uh, call this chroma verb wet so that I know that it relates to the chroma verb plugin. And this, of course, is going to be my delay feedback. So if you want to be, yeah, really on it in terms of really labeling the sort of changes that you're making, then you can do that. So again, what we're going to need to do one last time is to make sure that we're switching on um, a feedback amount, come back to the velocity value amount. And again, what I can do is to then choose the amount of feedback that I want for each individual step. Now, I need to be a little bit careful here. Values over 100%. Um, in terms of the feedback amount in the tape delay actually produce regenerating delay. So in other words, the delay rather than sort of um, fading out will actually begin to get louder. Let's risk one of those halfway through the sequence, because of course what we're then going to do is to rein it in for the second half of the sequence. And the only reason I say I need to be careful is because if it just so happens that I press stop at the point where I've got regenerating delay and then I come back to talk to you, all hell will be breaking loose. Okay, so I got lucky there. So what I've done here just right at the end is to come back and actually introduce just a little bit of envelope in the filter. What that's doing is just to give a little bit of bite to the way that the filter is behaving, and that's just articulating each note just a little bit more carefully. So that's really nice. What we've now got is this kind of electric piano, which we've kind of passed through a kind of virtual series of effects. And now what we've done is to automate individual parameters just to give this sequence a little bit more life. And again, I could come back and I could change the loop length so that effectively those parameters are being sort of manipulated differently each time the sequence plays back. All of those steps don't have to be used. This is a really nice way of generating, literally generating, ever-evolving sort of literally generative sequences of notes, much like modular synthesizers allow you to do. So let's just hear all of that alongside this little beat pattern that I've programmed here. So within this video, what we've done is to learn how to add new lanes to pattern sequences. We've also adjusted the pitches of the note values that we've put within a pattern sequence. We've learned how to do that. But much more important, we've now got these orange lanes down at the bottom, all of which represent snapshot automation parameters.